going to look at the birth of current electricity, which all started with the invention of the battery, the electrochemical cell. In the 1700s, we could really consider that time to be the glory days of static electricity. Scientists were inventing all types of static electric devices and using them to just shock anything they could get their hands on. We had inventions of the electroscope, the Leyden jar, the electrophorus, lots of different static generators. Scientists could um, generate large amounts of static electricity, big sparks. Ben Franklin would throw parties in which he would do static electric demonstrations, but mainly there wasn't a lot you could do with the static electricity. It was limited to just parlor tricks and demonstrations. But that all changed in the late 1700s when a scientist by the name of Luigi Galvani was seeing what the effects of static electricity on dead animals would be. And his animal of choice was the frog. So he would take uh, frogs and charge up Leyden jars and then use the Leyden jar to shock the frogs. And in 1771, he discovered that he could make the frog legs twitch whenever he zapped them with static electricity. You might have um, seen demonstrations of this. I've never seen one live, but I've seen them on a video of how you, know, you take the frog, the dead frog, and you zap it with electricity and the legs would kick. Well, Galvani discovered this in 1771. Well, while he was doing his experiments, on one occasion, he was poking on the frog and the legs kicked, even though he didn't zap it with static electricity. So he had to figure out what's going on. He thought that perhaps static electricity was leaking from the atmosphere. He thought it might have been leaking from charged laden jars or other things in his lab. But he finally decided that there wasn't static electricity leaking from anywhere external to the frog. He postulated or came up with the idea that maybe the electricity was already in the frog. That the frog was like a laden jar that had electricity stored in it. And as long as you didn't touch it in the right places or the wrong places, the electricity would stay there, but if you touched it in the right spots, it would release the electricity just like the Leyden jar could shock you if you connected the positive to the negative. So his idea was that all animals, all living things, had animal electricity in them. This is a wood carving image of Galvani's 1791 laboratory. They would take uh, blocks of wood and carve pictures into them and then ink them and stamp them. You might have done something like this with potatoes before. But in his lab, you see, here's a frog hanging by a wire and he's poking at it with a, some type of scalpel. This is a hand crank static generator. He could attach his Leyden jar to this generator, crank it, and charge up the Leyden jar. Here's a frog on a board. I have no idea what this is frog is hanging inside of a glass beaker. But this is what his lab looked like and what he was uh, doing. So he, he uh, publicizes his idea. Hey, we can make the frog legs twitch by touching them here and here with my scalpels. That's releasing electricity that's inside of the frog. So other scientists hear that idea and try it themselves and decide uh, is his explanation a good one or maybe is there some other reason. Well, one scientist who disagreed with him strongly, in fact, um, Alessandro Volta and Luigi Galvani had a bitter rivalry. I really don't know why they were bitter enemies, but they absolutely hated each other. Uh, written records say that uh, people kept them apart because if they ever were in the same room, one of them would shoot the other one. Um, so Volta disagreed with Galvani, and he wanted to publicly humiliate him. So he was motivated a little bit by, I want to discover the science, but a lot by, I want to make this guy look bad. So Volta starts playing around and working with the same kind of experimental setup that Galvani had. And Volta determined, hey, the electricity is not already in the frog, but by poking the frog with two different metals, we create the electricity, and that's what caused the frog legs to kick. 
So he did his own experiments and he tried, instead of frog legs, he took paper that had been soaked in salt water and he connected it to two different metals. He found that zinc and silver seemed to work really well, giving him a continuous electric current. Silver is rather expensive, so instead of using zinc and silver, today we normally use zinc and copper. But he found that he could generate electric current by taking the two different metals and connecting them to something that was wet or moist. And salt water um, paper was his um, item of choice. This was like the wet frog body with, say, an iron scalpel and a steel scalpel or copper pewter or something poked into it. Two different metals poking into that frog created the electricity. So this was 1799, and this was the first electrochemical cell. Well, he did more experiments, and he found that if he made a bunch of these cells and connected them together, you would get even more current. He was probably influenced by the fact that Ben Franklin had discovered that if you took several Leyden jars and connected them together, you could make their charges add up and give you a much bigger spark. So he tried it with these cells, and this became known as the voltaic pile, where he would pile them up. He would take a zinc disc, he would take his paper with salt water soaked, and then he'd take his copper or silver, and then he'd put another zinc, cardboard, copper, zinc, cardboard, copper, zinc, cardboard, copper, zinc, cardboard, copper, and he would keep piling it up, and this became known as the voltaic pile. This was the first electrochemical battery. Today's batteries are made virtually the same way. Two metals with a conducting material, moist material, called an electrolyte with them. So in 1800, we had the invention of the battery. There are a lot of different ways to make these electrochemical batteries or voltaic piles. All you need are two different metals and have them connected to the same conducting fluid. We can put liquid in cups and have two different metals into each liquid and then connect it together with a wire between them. Or we can pile them up the way Alexander Volta did. When you have one cell, one single cell, that's called a cell, but two or more of these are a battery. So if you had met in lab today, the rest of this lab, we would be testing materials to see what kind of voltage they would give us, and you would build voltaic piles. In the past, we've had students who stacked them up and got, this is 27 and a half volts, so you can get quite a strong voltage by piling these up, and we can use these batteries to make LED lamps glow.